Hi, and it's good to be back on YouTube. In this video, I'm going to share my seven EV and e-bike hopes for 2021. 2020 has been a very challenging year, so in this video I'm going to just concentrate on these seven hopeful things that I think are around in the world of EVs and the world of e-bicycles and other kind of human scale, more sustainable, zero tailpipe emissions transport. So I've made myself a list and I'm going to go through them now. So number one then, let's get to electric cars. So I'm a former Hyundai Ioniq electric owner, used to have one in the UK before moving here to Denmark. There's a number of ways of looking at Hyundai's electric cars. Firstly, they're the kind of efficiency leaders out there and the Ioniq, the Kona, these are great cars uh, if you can afford them. And they are at the kind of efficiency peak really but they've always been a kind of low level thing for Hyundai, I guess, in spite of all the kind of engineering marvel. And so what are they up to with those? So a number of worrying things looking now as a sort of former Hyundai owner, so someone who's experienced an Ionic Electric, but no longer owns one and has no particular kind of investment in them. What's been going on? I've seen these things about the battery worries on the packs on the Konas in particular, some sort of issues around needing massive level recalls. And the other weird thing this year was the Korean, is it K-pop band, BTS, um, singing a song about Ionic. I guess this was to launch Hyundai's new sub-brand, Ionic, which is a bit confusing if you've owned an Ionic. The, their new electric cars will come under this kind of sub-brand of the overall firm. I think there's still this issue with the kind of um, dissonance with legacy automakers. You know, they make some cars that are polluting and then they have to try and kind of advertise their zero tailpipe emissions cars but that exposes obviously the pollution of the fossil fuel cars that they still make. So there's this weird kind of thing and maybe splitting off a sub-brand is a way to get around that issue, is a way to kind of package that and put it in a box, that kind of, uh, you know, that, that sort of dissonance. I don't know. The video got a lot of views. It's a bit of a strange thing. There's all these kind of lyrics inspired by, you know, electric cars, the themes of charging it and, and the low impact and the sort of riding on a bolt and this kind of thing. So there were these weird lyrics, but... They're a very popular band and that video got a lot of views. So hopefully that will have raised a lot of awareness. And hopefully this, even though this kind of, they look a bit like concept cars at the moment, all the Ionic sub-brand cars that Hyundai have shown so far. I've got a few screenshots here of them. But hopefully it means that Hyundai is expanding its range, is committed to this, wants to sell more cars, and we'll see where it goes with that. Outside of Hyundai and their electric cars, Tesla continues to go from strength to strength, both in terms of, you know, stock value and so on and just the number of sales. They're still very expensive cars. Um, yes, yeah, so they're not available to everybody. It's not kind of, you know, a car for everybody. Beyond that, I think there is, it's still too slow, but there are at least the signs of a kind of transition to more models becoming available. It seems like the, the legacy automakers have woken up and there are more models coming available and, you know, they kind of realize that the writing is on the wall for the fossil fuel vehicles. Linked to that is my second hope for 2021, which is that we've seen an increasing number of future coming bans on sale of petrol and diesel cars at all in a number of countries around the world. And that hopefully, again, shows the legacy automakers that the writing is on the wall. These are products that they won't be allowed to legally sell anymore in many territories on the planet, so that they're going to have to look into options, they're going to have to take it seriously, and I'm hopeful from that that they will actually do something about that and we'll see more sustainable zero tailpipe emission cars out there with more consideration for the whole carbon footprint of the whole life cycle of these vehicles. And I think, you know, that that is really clear now that this is, you know, one, one of these path stops in terms of this particular technology with fossil fuels and other paths need to be, to be opened up, whether that's, you know, battery electric vehicles or other things. Certainly they're the most promising thing right now. So that's my second hope for 2021. My third hope then, which is kind of related to something I've already said, is that Tesla, again, continues to go from strength to strength. Now, these are one of the automakers that have always only been in the zero tailpipe emissions, you know, car manufacturing business and, and other vehicles that they're expanding into, hopefully, over time. And again, their market value has gone crazy. Now, I have no investment in Tesla. I'm not bothered about whatever their, their share stock prices are. But at least, again, it probably shows the legacy automakers that there's something in it. It's not just a flash in the pan. And, you know, it shows a true alternative. And it also shows what's possible when you just don't have this compromise if you're partially in the kind of fossil fuel thing or mainly in the fossil fuel bucket. And then, you know, you're trying to do this thing as a niche thing on the side. If you're all in, there's a long way to go with this. And there's, there's a lot of market out there and there's a lot of potential. And hopefully Tesla is at least showing that way, whether you're a fan of Tesla or not, whether you own one or not, 
at least it's kind of showing that possibility stronger and stronger over time. So that's my third hope for 2021. My fourth reason to be hopeful then for EVs and e-bikes and more sustainable transport in 2021. I've now managed to spend a full year without a car here in Denmark. And I had an EV when I left the UK just over a year and a half ago. And through lots of different reasons, I decided not to replace it here in Denmark and went for the biking option instead. Now, it's a terrible climate from some points of views. It's cold and dark a lot of the time and it rains a lot. Um, it is flat, of course, there's that to sort of as a trade off to that. But I started from a very low starting point, not having cycled for more than 30 years. I did try renting a kind of analog bicycle with no assist, a sort of traditional bicycle. Didn't like it very much. I had no intention of using it regularly. Discovered these electric assist bicycles and it just opened a whole door on a new way of doing things, a new way of traveling around. I hired a petrol car very briefly over the summer when it was possible to move around. It wasn't a very pleasant experience on many levels, but let's not worry about that now. The holiday was nice. It's nice to spend some time with the family. But I've now put close to 6,000 kilometers, so over kind of 4,000 miles on e-bikes here. I commute with my son on a cargo bike. I use it for all kinds of different errands and trips and things like that and shopping and recycling things and getting big items. And it's a lot of fun. I'm enjoying it. And I think that's actually one of the things I can do. Having moved from the UK to Denmark, I could have tried to get some electric car, a Tesla or something like that, travel around, do long road trips in mainland Europe. But there's not a lot new to that on YouTube and I wouldn't be learning a lot from doing that. That's just kind of, we know the sort of road, the path that goes down. And um, yeah, so the, the discovering e-bikes thing has been a really big um, adventure, you know, a really big sort of learning curve. Um, I'll cover that maybe in other videos in the future, exactly what that's involved. But it fills me with a lot of hope because other options are possible. And if it's possible for someone like me, who wasn't keen on cycling, hadn't done it for more than 30 years, and if I can manage to replace a car for local trips and local commuting and still enjoy it and do it in a kind of rainy day, there's a storm out the window at the moment, then that's a really hopeful sign for the future. And I think it's a lot to do with this kind of, you know, EV, electric bike, electric motorbike kind of technology that's now really becoming available. And there's kind of generic platforms that people are using for all sorts of different brands and all sorts of different approaches and geometries and styles of these things. Then that's a really hopeful sign that shows a lot is possible. And we're not just kind of locked into this fossil fuel car culture, although there's a long way to go for making this sort of mainstream or a genuine option in many places in the world. At least it's a sign of hope, I think. My fifth area of hope for 2021 is actually again related to this with the e-bikes in that I'm trying out now a speed e-bike. So these are a bit controversial in some quarters and legislation and regulations about them vary from country to country. They're legal here in Denmark. They require a kind of extra sort of light vehicle insurance, which I've now got. Um, and I'm having a lot of fun with it so far. I haven't made any videos about it yet. I will do. Ironically, the bike is called a supercharger. So even though I didn't end up with a Tesla here in Denmark, I did end up with a supercharger. And it gives, you know, it's a premium bike. Like a Tesla is a premium EV. This is a premium e-bike. Um, it's got a lot of tech. It's got a lot of flexibility. It's got a lot of power. And it makes this e-biking option even more attractive when you're not got sort of, you know, large cargo or transporting a child. Um, yeah, so I'm going to cover more of that. And I think even though there's a lot of kind of strange... Um, you know, resistance and negativity about the speed e-bikes, the speed pedelecs. Again, they show, you know, a lot more is possible than just kind of conventional transport options that we've had for over a century now. And that is another hopeful sign possibly for the future. A sixth area of hope then is not stuff that's available yet, but things that are on the horizon. Now, I've covered one of these in a video that seems to be getting a lot of views and a lot of interest recently, the biohybrid, which is a kind of four wheel pedelec. Uh, that's just been made available to pre-order, I think, in Germany now at a price including taxes of nine and a half thousand euros for the small battery for 1.2 kilowatt hour battery and about 50 kilometers of range. So if you want the bigger battery in that to go 100 kilometers, the 2.4 kilowatt hour battery, you might be looking at 12,000, 13,000 euros. So that's kind of a lot for what that vehicle is, I guess. But things like that, and there's lots of other kind of... Um, you know, e-bike technology used in all sorts of different transport vehicles, you know, logistics vehicles for kind of last mile deliveries and local deliveries and other kind of enclosed or sort of more car-like forms of bicycle or tricycle or quadricycle type transport around. Um, there's lots of them. If you look on YouTube, there's even things that are more sort of car-like but still classed as motorbikes like the Aptera that a few channels have been covering recently. I think this kind of availability of all this sort of electrified transport technology from cars, from bicycles, from motorbikes 
is opening up all kinds of options and we're starting to see things that now even though they might sort of have to find a particular niche for now like the biohybrids I suspect won't, we won't see large numbers of those as passenger vehicles we'll see them for deliveries we'll see the truck and cargo versions first I think even though I'd love the passenger one it's very expensive and I don't know if it'll be available and legal here in Denmark but I think we'll see them for kind of deliveries because they just make sense for food deliveries for all sorts of other kind of you know local logistics and other vehicles and other things of that kind may well find their niche and even though they might not take off again for the mainstream they show what's possible I think this again signs signs for hope really uh, there's other things like the Citroen Ami uh, which is a kind of a car you don't need a driving license for I'm not sure exactly about the availability of it they're talking about it in, in France taking interest in other countries by email and so on you can register your interest these won't suit everybody um, but it just showed that that a shortage of ideas and a shortage of kind of technologies and platforms to get us out of this kind of fossil fueled um, car culture that's not the issue it's more around sort of you know um, culture education governance regulations infrastructure incentives all these kind of things it's not the lack of ideas it's not the lack of technological possibilities it's other things a seventh reason for hope then I think is all these kind of uh, lockdowns and we've had them in Denmark here and we're currently in in some tier of, of lockdown currently and most people are away from their workplaces and many shops are closed and things like that with sort of streets being converted to walking or cycling or restaurant dining and things like that it shows quite sudden change on those kind of scales of the infrastructure and other possibilities again are possible so I'm not saying anything is going to last when you know the vaccines roll out and other things but at least it shows what's possible it's a sign of things that we can take some hope that other ways of doing things are possible that are better for the planet better for our health better for our fitness and just you know different ways of doing things than just you know continual growth of fossil fuel car sales everywhere so those are my kind of seven areas for hope then for 2021 so I'll go back through them so it's you know what uh, the, the variety of electric cars are becoming available and the sort of greater commitment at least even though it's still a very sort of a sort of incremental diffusion at the moment of lots of different car makers the bands uh, on fossil fuel car sales hopefully convincing legacy automakers that you know this is something they have to take very seriously Tesla again showing that if you go all in on a you know a battery electric model that you can go a long way if you don't compromise with having all these sort of you know um, contradictory offerings uh, my time here in Denmark showing that it's possible to live without a car even if you haven't been very keen on cycling and other forms of transport my experiments then with different forms of e-bikes as well not just the standard ones but going into kind of new territory into the more controversial and uh, you know sort of bleeding edge of this kind of e-bike technology these variety of ideas popping up from different manufacturers using EV e-bike and e you know electric motorbike technologies and, and generic systems that can be sort of built up then with different geometries and designs and shells and things and the kind of things that have been happening in response to lockdowns that show you know you don't have to have cities as completely dominated by cars and parking for cars and and vehicles of those kinds you can get this kind of more human scale more sustainable zero tailpipe emissions transport it's just you know a lot of other pieces have to fall in place as well I would like to say a few more kind of updates and things about just life in Denmark I've been away from the channel for quite a while I apologize I just haven't had the energy and motivation to do it uh, with you know working away from home and so on it's uh, difficult to keep focus and it, it's been just challenging to kind of do this on the side as well as all the other things that have to be uh, done with the family and so on so I, I do hope to make more videos regularly in 2021 they may be more like this a bit more kind of just talking and, and updates on things um, and whenever the weather permits it some things outside on the new e-bikes and, and exploring things a lot of options are sort of closed down right now that's fine um, but I'm still kind of covering various developments and I'm shooting footage when and where I can of different things I'm a little bit confused and maybe viewers in Denmark can help me out with this I understand that there are no plans to put I can't remember a quarter of a million half a million electric vehicles on the roads here in Denmark by some time scale not too far away maybe 2030 or something like that um, I'm really confused about the implementation of that maybe I've got it wrong the last time I checked about Tesla prices and bear in mind Tesla prices here in Denmark are higher than they are in UK for an equivalent vehicle higher than they are in Norway much higher than they are in USA even after considering all taxes and other kind of things of registration but my understanding is that the price of a Tesla here has just gone up by 20 or 30 percent so I'm assuming other cars are in the same situation so some sort of um, incentive period with low registration tax seems to have expired so I'm not quite sure what the plan is here to encourage uptake of EVs when they're actually getting more expensive than they were before that policy was announced 
I'm not sure if everything is lined up there or whether I just haven't understood what's going on because I've been taking more interest in the kind of e-bike world at the moment. So yeah, if you know anything about that in Denmark, please do let me know. It's rather weird. The channel has been getting views and new subscribers. So welcome. If you're a new subscriber, you're very welcome. And thanks for taking an interest in the videos and making comments. I'm still trying to reply to, the, reply to as many comments as I can. As I say, there's been lots of other things going on and uh, I've been struggling with a bit with motivation. But I, I do read every comment and I try and respond, you know, whenever I can. And you're very welcome looking through all the various videos. I realize you'll see it's changed from a kind of, you know, electric car theme to now sort of different things. But yeah, you're very welcome and do have a look around the different videos that are there. It's a bit of a strange uh, situation, though, in terms of incentives to make more videos, because I seem to have been getting more subscribers and more views not making videos than when I'm making videos, but I do miss it. I miss all the interaction in the comments. I miss shooting footage and editing things and, and just recording. So I am going to try and do more things in 2021. But please let me know what kind of things that, you know, you'd like to see. You'd like to see me doing things about the things that I'm trying out. Um, it will be more bicycle related. I'm not sure I'm going to be doing that many test drives um, just because of the whole sort of Corona thing. I have actually seen some people here have been getting the ID3. The Volkswagen ID3 seems to be quite popular here. I've seen more than a handful of those around. I've even seen the kind of Honda E, the little electric Honda that I talked about a while ago on the channel. Uh, lots of Teslas here because there's a Tesla store in Aarhus, Denmark. So you'd always see various Teslas around. Um, yeah, so there's quite a few electric cars, but you know, still not that many really. And I think you know, there's probably more electric cars sold in a month or so in, in the UK than there are in total in Denmark still. I think it's still at a very low kind of uh, market uptake rate here in Denmark. But where we are here being in one of the bigger cities, we do still see electric cars around. It's always, always great to see them, especially when you're cycling, because of course you don't get the kind of tailpipe gunk coming out of the back as you're going past. So yeah, feel free to let me know things you'd like me to talk about in 2021. Thanks for sticking with the channel. Thanks for watching the videos. I hope you're doing as well as you can in these circumstances. I send out all of my best wishes and for a better new year in 2021. So yeah, thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you'd like to see more videos from me and bye for now.